When it comes down to it, knowledge is power. This means that having access to information or knowledge can help us make informed decisions that help us have greater control over our lives. Our email is one of the key ways we get access to knowledge and information. Emails, especially emails like newsletters, are truly like vehicles of information coming right to our doorstep. And when I really think about it and reflect, there are so many opportunities that I wouldn't have known about, things that I wouldn't have gotten to share with other people for them to utilize had I just not taken a few extra seconds to read an email. If we know how to use them, emails can really give us the resources and tools to improve ourselves, our relationships, and our communities. So here's how you can harness the full power of email. We'll first start by creating your knowledge funnel, then by distributing and destroying, which sounds really intense, but I promise uh, it's not. And then lastly, building your second brain. Okay, so first we're gonna create our knowledge funnel. This is where we're gonna subscribe to things that will help us propel our goals forward. So before starting this step, you'll definitely wanna think about what it is that you wanna accomplish this year. What are you interested in? Are you looking for a new job? Are you planning on making a really big purchase? So first take some time to explore companies, organizations, online communities, products, things that align with what your focus is currently. Simply typing in some keywords into Google will most likely get you the results you're looking for. And I just thought of this right now because I have chat GPT right here bookmarked, but I'm sure if you also ask chat GPT, like for example, if you're interested in getting into videography, I'm sure you could ask chat, chat GPT, what are some online communities for videographers? And it would probably come up with um, some really great results. Okay, so let's say that I really wanna get more immersed into the product design world and I'm looking for some product design communities. I can search best product designer communities and see what comes up. If I click on this one and scroll and read and I could see that there's you know one that interests me right here, Design Buddies. If I open that in a new tab and check out that community organization, whatever it might be, nine times out of ten they're gonna have a place to subscribe to their newsletter either in the home page of their site somewhere or in the footer like this community has here. I'm already subscribed to this community, but just for demonstration purposes. So the first step is really just exploring a bunch of places online, putting your email to organizations, companies, places that you think could provide you with the value that you're looking for. And just as a side note, if you are a designer, I definitely recommend subscribing to Design Buddies as well as ADP List, Design Gigs for Good. I'll be sure to link in the description below a bunch of organizations that I think could be beneficial if you're interested in art, design, or entrepreneurship. Step two, distribute and destroy. Destroy sounds super extreme, but basically what we'll be doing is distributing our emails into themed labels and destroying anything that doesn't fit within those labels. So after step one, the emails are going to start to flow in and your inbox is going to look like a mess. This might already be the step that you're at um, where your inbox is just full of maybe hundreds of emails and you're not even really sure what's in there, what you're subscribed to, what value each one provides. This is what my inbox looks like after already having some labels applied, but as you can see, there are are some straggler emails which we're going to organize and go through together. So based on my interest areas from step one, the labels that I created were these ones over here on the left. So I have art, which has art resources and art opportunities. Community, which has emails around digital communities, networking, um, events, things that relate to meeting new people and getting involved in the community. Design has design resources. Entrepreneurship has entrepreneurship resources. Receipt has receipts from my purchases online. Social good are things pertaining to donations or volunteer opportunities or social impact news. And then lastly, my last label is around traveling. So when I book tickets or have, you know, hotel receipts, um, I like to keep those organized under traveling. And so again, for step two, you'll go in and you'll go through each email. You'll either distribute it to a label or you're going to destroy it. So if you want to distribute an email to a specific label, you click on that email. So in this one, I'm subscribed to this um, online community called Create and Cultivate. They, they do some really great events around um, women empowerment and women entrepreneurship and content creation and marketing. And so in this situation, I do wanna keep receiving this email and I would say that it belongs under the labels of 
community and entrepreneurship. To have this email automatically distribute to those labels, what we're gonna do is click on these three dotted icons for more, and you're gonna filter messages like these. From this, usually what all you need to do is just make sure that the email that it's coming from is correct there, but sometimes the from email is one that you can't specifically reply to in which you might wanna specify that type of email more based on like, the words that it has, or perhaps the name of the company or the organization. In this case, the email that it's coming from is perfect because we want all these emails from Create Cultivate to have this specific label. So once you specify the requirements, you'll create filter. So when you reach this step, there are two things that you're gonna wanna do. One, apply the label. So you're gonna wanna check this box, and then you're gonna wanna choose the label that it belongs to. If you already created the labels already, they're gonna already be here for you to select from. But if you haven't created it yet, you can create it from here as well and give it a name. You can also create nested labels as well if you wanna get super specific within these main label categories. So that's a great opportunity as well if, if you have maybe art and let's say you want to get specific between whether it's an art opportunity or it's an art tool or a resource or it's an art job but for now this i believe belongs to i'm going to give it the label of entrepreneurship and then the second thing you're going to want to do is also apply it to any matching other conversations this is going to help with the workload because once you apply it to other matching conversations you're not going to have to do this every single time for this specific type of email you're just doing Doing it once and it's applying it to all the other ones that exist in your inbox and all these other options here you can toy with them if you want but this is personally all i feel i need to make my email inbox organized so once you're done with that you can go ahead and create the filter and as you can see now this type of email has the label of entrepreneurship if i go back over here that same email is now in my entrepreneurship label so then what happens when you have an email that does not provide any value or that is no longer relevant to you, i.e. it's spam. For these types of emails, you're not going to delete them, you're going to destroy them. And by that, I mean you're gonna unsubscribe so that they never send you an email again and you don't have to continuously delete these types of emails. So this is an example of one for me. I don't really wanna get emails from Quora. Quora is great, but I just don't want emails from them. For the majority of emails, all you'll need to do is scroll to the bottom and find the place where they say unsubscribe. Sometimes some organizations make this really difficult by having you have to sign in and change your email preferences. Most of the time it's pretty simple. You just click the link and then you click unsubscribe. Sometimes they make it super easy where all you have to do is click unsubscribe from within the email and then it'll tell you that you're unsubscribed. Um, for this one, I do need to be a little bit more specific. So I want to say, do not stop receiving suggested spaces emails. Don't send me those emails. It's saved. We're good to go. And after I've unsubscribed from that email, now I'm going to delete it from my inbox. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm also guilty of simply just deleting the emails that I don't want and not going through the process of unsubscribing. But I promise you it's worth it, especially as you're going through all of your emails to create these labels. Taking those extra few seconds to unsubscribe is going to save you so much time later on because consider, do you want to take 15 seconds to unsubscribe right now or do you want to take five seconds to delete this email forever, every single time, which can really add up if you're deleting it, you know, every other day or every week. And so now I'm going to go through the remaining of these emails, either categorizing them or um, destroying them. So let's speed through that right now. Step three, building your second brain. First of all, congratulations if you made it to this step because step two is no joke. It can take a really long time, but the beauty of it is that you only have to do it once and once you've done it, it's over and you can enjoy the benefits of your inbox. So now comes the fun part. Now that all of your emails are distributed into labels, this is what it should look like when you come into your inbox. Everything comes up here at the top. It is nicely labeled. You can click on each one of those labels and see what you have going on under that specific label. A neat trick is to make things even look more clean and nice to look at, you can click here is unread to only see the emails that are currently in red and it'll take away everything else for the time being. So I can also click on here for design and see what do I have going on for design. If I only wanna look at the things that are unread, I will click is unread. 
Okay, so then what happens as you're looking through your emails and you find one that has a really great resource or opportunity? How do you take that information into something actionable? Well, this is where your second brain comes in. Second brain is a term coined by Tiago Forte, who is the founder of Forte Labs and also the author of Building a Second Brain. In this book, he discusses how information overload can really hinder our creativity. And so he proposes this idea of a second brain, which is essentially a a central repository where we're storing all of our information that we come across. So back to our email, let's say that you come across something that seems like a really great opportunity for maybe a friend of yours. Of course, the direct action after that would just be to forward that email to your friend or send it to them through text. But what if you come across information that you're not ready to do anything with it at the moment, but you just know it's useful. So let's say I go here to my um, to my design inbox and I open this newsletter, this ADP list newsletter. And let's say I find this really great one. Oh, this one says free design resources. Love it. And it's leading to a Twitter thread with a bunch of design tools. Let's say this looks like a really great resource for me. It's a Figma crash course. And so perhaps it's not something that I am able to do right now, but I I want to reference it later on. Okay, and so now I'm going to put this resource in my quote unquote second brain. Your second brain can take many forms. It could be hosted in Airtable, Google Sheets, Notion, whatever works best for you but ideally it will kind of work like a database so that you can easily find that information later on. This is where I've been kind of building a second brain. It's a little bit unorganized and I have some duplicate tables because I'm still working through some of the formatting and how I want to structure it. But this is where I've been kind of pulling in some resources. I have here a base called design resources, which is where I would want to store something like this, this Figma crash course. If we open this, I have several tabs around different types of resources that I think could be very useful, not just for myself as a designer to reference, but more specifically for other designers. I do mentorship on ADP list and something that I like to do at the end or at some point in the session is share this space with them share that there's this design resource base I have. It has a bunch of tools, guides, job boards, um, and this is something that I really love to give my mentees so that they can reference it and hopefully um, it could be useful on their journey. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this Figma crash course to this guides tab because I think that's where it feels most relevant. Now, if you really wanna take this a step further and probably in a better direction than this one that Tiago Forte would probably recommend more is not just pooling in the resources or the tools into a general type of spreadsheet like this, even though that is very, very helpful, but it's probably even better to pull in these specific resources into projects rather than just these general kind of um, bases where you might, you might go in there later on to check it out or you might not. And so an example of that that I have here is this graduate school base. Now, I don't plan on going to graduate school anytime super soon, but it is something that I would like to do someday. And so as I've been finding graduate school scholarships, as I've been researching schools and, and looking at places that I'm interested in, I've been pulling it here into this graduate school base. I have my ongoing list of scholarships that I've been finding by being subscribed to all these different newsletters and emails. And so some other examples of this is instead of having a base or a spreadsheet called writing resources, instead add those resources to a project called my first book. Or let's say you come across a really great um, resource on how to design a really beautiful website. Instead of just adding that to a base called maybe design resources like mine, um, make that a specific project called my website refresh. And so when you're actually actively working on that project, you're more likely to use that resource because it's right there. And one more example, in case you're just interested in all the different ways that you could use Airtable or build your second brain, is this career opportunities base that I started. For this one, I've been pulling in different fellowships and career programs and categorizing them by date so that either myself or whoever I share this with can go in and see the month that a specific program has a deadline and see if they want to apply to it. I have the name of the program, a quick overview, the industries that it pertains to, 
the deadline, and then where to find more information about it. One last thing to mention is that harnessing the full power of email is an ongoing process. This means that as you continue on throughout life, you'll have new emails to categorize and you'll have other emails that no longer serve you. Overall, don't worry too much about perfection. Just see your email as an incoming influx of information that we're all quite honestly lucky to have. For me, emails carry information that can quite literally change our lives. And I hope this video inspired you to see it this way too. If you're having any trouble with step one of this process, which is figuring out what kind of information you want in your knowledge funnel, I recommend you check out my video on 23 goals for 2023 to get you started on some brainstorming. Thanks for watching and have a great day.